so guys the security situation in nigeria is really getting out of hand and like i always say it appears the government does not even have a strategy you know that they want to really follow to ensure that these security challenges are brought to zero you can see what this headline says remittable advocates for intense prayer to combat insecurity while moving in bulletproof cars armed security so this is what i keep saying that these leaders they are just detached from the reality of what nigerians are going through so you can imagine what nigerians pass through every day of their lives especially for those who travel you know using cars i mean land travel people are really being tensed up people are afraid you are traveling you are just you you, you might end up having hypertension because you are afraid of being kidnapped that is what is happening although that of abuja is currently in the news but i tell you this kidnapping is happening across the nation and this headline equally says lawless head has turned a kitty multi-million naira farm to grazing land honestly these fulani headers they are really so fearless when it was a time for buari people thought it was because buari was the, the the president possibly that was what was aiding their boldness but you can see even despite the fact that buari is no longer there they are not afraid of anybody we've seen all the massacre going going on across the nation you can imagine if it were to be another tribe that was causing this menace do you know what would have happened to that tribe honestly it would have been hell but look these fulani headsmen they are doing all these things and they are getting away with it we've not really seen nigeria prosecute this full and headsman despite the fact that they've killed so many there was a headline i saw yesterday it shocked my bones i mean it shocked me to my bones where they were mentioning the number of people that were killed in 2021 i was like god what is this i mean in terms of this full and farmers header clash that we've seen across nigeria if you know the number of people that have lost their lives you'll be wondering why these people are still left to roaming the streets of nigeria but you can see they still get away with all their crime so that is the kind of nigeria where we are where the law applies to a, a certain people and does not apply to a certain people i just hope that this nigeria will work so guys this other headline says abia government uncovers tunnel where kidnappers keep victims so it is happening everywhere yes it's happening everywhere and don't forget that since ot took over office there was a time they discovered decayed bodies of people close to where you know these fulanis have their market in in abia state and that was how i think that market was closed down for some days and possibly they all sat down and talked to before they reopened it but i want to tell you that the level of insecurity i'm just wondering when nigeria say they are bringing investors who want to come and invest in such an environment and this other headline says over 190 repented Boko Haram terrorists released back into communities Nigerian defense headquarters that is coming from them they are saying that they are releasing these people you know since Buhari came into power till now we've seen so many repented Boko Haram some of them are empowered and we've also heard people come out to see even those of them that were that say they've repented they saw them went back to the bushes to meet these terrorists I, and you can imagine so we don't even know the kind of training they give to these people before they release Release them we only hear that they've repented these are people that have killed and maimed you know others they will just be given express forgiveness and be released back into the society but we have innocent nigerians who are languishing across the prisons i mean the correctional centers in nigeria nobody is even calling up their cases some of them are very ignorant but you see Boko around people people that have fought and their hands are stained you see them getting this forgiveness sometimes they are even giving money they are giving maybe some skill set and all that in nigeria criminality peace that's just it and you can see it for yourself so you can imagine this happening in the country and we say we want to end insecurity it's going to be very difficult so this is coming from wiki and it says kidnappers hiding in abuja forest says fct minister wiki so if they know where these people are why are they not going there to dislodge them you know it has always been like that in nigeria we've always heard that you know the zambiza forest is where these uh, boko haram are being housed i mean the members of boko haram that is their base Tell me or ask me what keeps the Nigerian government away from going to clear that Zambiza forest. At least, you know, bring it down so that these terrorists would, would leave that environment. If you know where and where is housing them. Okay, Tinubu said he was going to raise uh, forest guards when he, when he takes over office. We are yet to see that happen. You know, there is nothing like that happening. And that is what is emboldening these terrorists. They get their victims and they go into forest and from there they start negotiating. And from one forest to the other, they keep reconnecting them to other places. Before you know it, they've moved from one state to another. And that is what is even making it difficult, you know, in terms of rescuing their victims. So, and finally, look at this headline this has to do with one of the people that were involved in 
in the massacre that happened recently in the Plateau State. So this guy was arrested and he's one of those people. So this person uh, tweeted and said, the confession of Jibrin Nuhu, a 47-year-old Fulani settler in Gawaza village in Bokus, Plateau State. He tells the police that he was involved in the Xmas Eve massacre in Bogos, saying other Fulani gunmen from Nasarawa State joined them. Oh my God. He was born and raised in Gazawa. Yet, you can imagine. So guys, you can see that this communities you know welcome to these fulanis you know some of them were born there now they've grown up to become terror to that environment honestly these are some of the things we must condemn so guys before i allow you watch the video of this guy's interview i want you to listen to what this human rights uh, will i call him a human rights lawyer that also has a a kind of a television station stroke a youtube platform where he handles people's cases he has come out to talk about the police and even how the police hates this kidnapping by collecting money from kidnapped victims honestly nigeria is in a total mess you know when we talk about cleansing nigeria i mean every parastat i mean every parastata should be cleansed i mean everybody of the government because this corruption is across board no nobody is paid can you imagine the police that you are you are to trust they are now asking victims of kidnapping you know to give them money before they even tell you what the next step that they want to take honestly this is wrong let me allow you watch this video and alongside with the full Lani guys interview and drop your thoughts in the comment section below thank you trying to do something bad or was he trying to rescue himself no the nigerian government they encourage people to pay ransom to uh, to, to kidnappers See case where they do for papi, they pack a whole family. Yes, the family go to the police. Police talk to me, then bring 250,000 naira. Abi? Yes, sir. Hey, collect microphone. These people look for money, money. They can't manage, raise how much? Uh, as I said, the last time I discussed with them, they said they raised uh, 7 million. Yes, no, they say no. not between them and police. Okay, two hundred and fifty. They 000. don't raise how much out of the two hundred and fifty thousand. They didn't tell me how much they, they raised. They said they raised hundred thousand naira, gave to the police, and the police now said, okay, now we will we, we don't give this hundred thousand. Make we go settle with the kidnappers. <laughs> After okay. they don't release the people, then you can come back. We will track them. You are very correct. You are very correct, sir. You are brain is sharp. So you can imagine people were supposed to rescue you, they tell you to say go and cooperate. Even though I not go blame the police. It is for the safety of the people where they kidnap. You don't know who is who. Yes. Modern president at the travel go is uh, one of the days when they go. So when police stop me, as a Christian, I just they look, but now the police will be Muslim. Now you quote Bible for me. He said, make I go to Matthew 5.25. Make I read with the talk. <laughs> Muslim police. Yes. He quote Bible for you. Yes. So Matthew 5.25. When I go read them, he say, settle with your adversary quick. Else he will take you to court. So, guys, you can see what is happening in Nigeria. That is the police that is meant to protect you as a Nigerian. You know, they are meant to protect us. The government has that duty to protect us as citizens and also to protect our properties. But the other way is what we are seeing in Nigeria. Let me allow you to watch the interview of the Fulani guy. Although he was interviewed in Fulani, but just for you to like see the face of the people cursing this menace. These are human beings like us, but I wonder why they are not having that feeling. You know, I don't know why they don't have that human feeling, that compassion, you know, that you can just take away the life of your fellow human being and it means nothing to you. I don't know where that is coming from. Take a look at that interview. Ya kawo mutanen tan daga area Nasarawa. Ka ga ya mun arubuce na rubuta. Ali. Eh? Ali. Ali waye. Ali Ibrahim. To yanzu ya ne zamu yi mu samu Ali Ibrahim. Yanzu sai dai in anje mashi. In anje ina. Ya gidan shi. Gidan shi yana ina. Na taware. Taware. Eh. To lokacin rubutun nan wani mutane ne ku kuka kashe a zaka iya ga mana sunan mutun daya wanda ka sani wanda har da kai an kashe shi shine samu 
daga tawari samun daga tawari ku kuka kashe shi kenan to ka ga mun sunayen mutanen da kuke tare da su nan nan ta eriyan ka ta eriyan garwaza wanda kuka tafi da makaman ku ka ga mun sunayen su domin ka ga mun na rurubuta suna ka ga mun sunayen yanzu sai ba zan iya kira maka kai tunda yake na ba ka rubuce sai ga karanta shi ne jima a a ka ga mun ka fara ga mun in ka manta wayan su sai tuna shar maka akwai akwai ni din okay kai to sai waye akwai ali din ali ibran okay to sai waye akwai alaji akuru eh akwai habibu akwai ka bude don ka akwai haruna mm akwai suna nan dai to ka manta da sauran ne kana son tuna shar maka to na ka bani sunan akwai wani da suna da ka bani abdul hamid wada haka shi ma ya bi ku to ka bani sunan wani da ake ce huseni inusa jaoji haka ka bani sunan hasan inusa jaoji haka ka bani sunan sani inusa jaoji ka bani sunan habibu yakubu haka ka bani sunan alhaji yakubu manu haka ka bani sunan alhaji tanko manu haka ko eh haka ne ko haka to so guys one thing about nigeria is that they give this fulanis a whole lot of privileges i mean these people they involve themselves in all kinds of crime especially when it has to do with taking away the lives of people but we don't see prosecution you know when the the benway governor the ex-governor of uh, benway state you know samuel otom was lamenting even those that uh, attempted you know taking away his lives they were sent to abuja before you know it they've released them oh my god i don't know i don't know there are a lot going on in this country so even interviewing this man and then posting it on the social media will that bring justice are they ready to prosecute them you hardly see these fulanis in jail even when they are arrested order from above get them released and i just keep wondering if that is also going to be happening in this current regime i just pray that people should pay for their crime that is my own position because we need to start building a country that we can we the citizens can start having confidence in before the outsiders will have confidence and then we'll start coming to invest in nigeria let me know what you think about all these points that i've just raised in this video so guys let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell please give this video a like so that youtube can recommend it to more people and let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below thank you